Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, Double Deuce here. Uh, today's engine day. Um, we got some pieces parts in the mail for the L400. And we got a new addition for the uh, Aussie V8. So stay tuned and here we go. We'll get into it and do a little bench racing, I guess. A little bench talk and uh, not a lot got done. But here we go. Oh, as you can see, I got a bunch of goodies here. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, like I said uh, before, it's engine day today. And we'll figure out a few things here. So, I got my crankshafts in the mail from my Toyin um, L400. And we'll get to that in a second. But, as you can see, we have a... Uh, little add-on here to my V8 so a little supercharger action happening here this thing's wicked cool um, I I wasn't gonna buy the supercharger yet for it um, but I figured hey I went this far with it I'm into it let's do it you know and uh, but so far so good it's uh <laughs> the detail in this is astronomical. I mean, you know, it's like it has two Perry carbs on it. Um, I got it just sitting there for now. I had it bolted on earlier and I took it back off for the simple fact that if I want to get this thing running first with one carburetor before I complicate it with, you know, once you start stacking um, options upon options and you haven't fired it up yet. You know, it just makes it a lot harder to, uh, you know, diagnose things, I should say. Um, the problem I had was the heads. I did not, um, not that I wanted to be cheap, but I wanted to build my own heads. And uh, apparently these are display only, so there's, some, there's something different about them that won't let this thing fire off. Um, so I've even seated the valves twice and everything else, but I think the distance between the um, the valve where it sets in the head, the the geometry of the rocker arm, all that stuff takes um, you know into play when you're trying to get something running. And I think what's happening is the valves are bouncing; they're not there's not enough spring tension on them, and uh, so when you're they're not bouncing back enough to shut the valves. So when the piston comes up the top dead center, the valve is just fluttering around there and it's letting the compression out and it won't let it pop. So, but, so I set my timing on the thing. He has you set it like five to 10 degrees um, off the mark there. This is actually like that would be top dead, well, that's a little that's five to five to ten degrees beside top dead center and as you see on the camshaft I marked off the firing order so so it'll be one eight four three six five seven two and that's how it fires so it's like a regular Chevrolet engine but the work in this is crazy 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 it's like give you guys a look up inside there so you can see the impellers in it um, See the impellers moving in there? That's pretty wild, huh? And like I say, the detail to poly 671 style roots blower. And it is wicked cool. <laughs> Crazy cool. So we'll set that off to the side. Like so now. Get my rubber O-rings and everything out of here. I keep dropping them. Good thing I got extras. Has a nice little uh, 115 MXL belt for it that, that runs with the tensioner. And uh, like I say, got a timing chain cover that goes over it when you get it all set. So I'm going to put one of the Perry carbs on here, get it running with this intake. And then the cool thing is this upper intake comes off and that mounting plate bolts right to it and the supercharger bolts right to that so it's really simple and like I say I've tried to get the thing running it, it you know sometimes it pops sometimes it doesn't um, so I ordered 
he has a set of billet heads um, that are ready to go and they got seated valves in them and everything with brass retainers and all that stuff because I think my problem is is when it does open the valve it's it's too much slop in the valve stem itself so it's sucking air in the valve stem and not pulling the charge in the intake and when the piston comes down the valve opens it's supposed to pull the charge in here but if you have any external leaks like where your valve um, comes through the head any external leaks in there is you know it's going to suck air through there first and it doesn't bring it in so that's the problem there so when I hopefully in the next week or two my heads will be here and it should be ready to roll and uh, then I'm gonna buy the transmission afterwards so um, a word of uh, advice if you're gonna buy one of these buy the kit off of them uh, for one it comes ready to put together I noticed his last kit already had the billet heads ready to go um, they came with the kit um, there was something else that was with the kit too that was an upgrade I can't remember what it was but uh, for the money um, you know I was building mine little at a time and it's I'm almost at retail of his asking price on eBay right now without the transmission so if I get the transmission I mean there are still other things to buy like motor mounts um, a couple of nipples for this the hardware kit um, he gives you a full igniter setup. I, I built my own igniters. Um, he gives you a full igniter setup with it and everything with a chrome distributor. And like I say, if you contact him um, at quarter under slash scale, um, he's you know, he's got the kit you know ready to go. So. I, like I say, I did mine by piece by piece um, because I didn't know how far I was going to get into the project before it stopped and all that. And, you know, and I think with the supercharger, um, the last one I seen on eBay was like 47 and change, 4800 bucks. you know. Um, like I say, I'm at almost retail now with this without the tranny. So, like I say, buy the kit off of him. It comes ready to go. He has all the instructions with it and... You know, you're not waiting and waiting because I'm waiting all the time for parts to come because, like I say, you know, I thought I was ahead of the game with the heads and then I found out I wasn't. So um, the castings were 95 bucks, you know, and I figured, well, you know, I bought the valves and I bought the springs and then I bought the rocker arms and stuff. All the stuff, rockers and stuff don't come with the billet heads, just the springs valves and retainers and stuff and they come supposedly all assembled so that's where I'm at on that so we'll slide that off to the side and uh, go from there now as you can see I got a bunch of crankshafts here and I went over this before where I did uh, the, I did drill the hole for you know for the front bearing and all that but one thing I noticed uh, because I got two, I bought two crankshafts. So I got another one here. Um, with the crankshafts, <laughs> I keep noticing um, a darker color. I'll zoom in on these things there, so you can see the difference in the colors. This is the original release crankshaft. This is the replacement crankshaft, and this is another replacement crankshaft. That's kind of brown and kind of a blackish brown and then this is black, you know, so they you can see the color difference on them there the hardening processes and they They sent me an extra um, Pulley and seal too. I don't know why with each crankshaft and uh, I know they're kind of tough to get off but so that's today's project we're gonna install the new crankshaft and um, you know go from there and one thing that I like to do when I order something in uh, like more than one you know multiples and stuff I like to compare um, the parts now if you look at these two crankshafts where do you see the difference there this one here is finished and this one here is like it's got the black hardening still on it and uh, like all the 
you know, all the raw journals and stuff are, you know, this one looks like it was kind of hardened afterwards. I don't know, because I, the front raw journal still got the black tinning on it, or this one here. Almost looks like it was used, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I don't know. Try to wipe that off my friggin' nail. But maybe it's just the way it was uh, ground and polished. I don't know. But that was an interesting note. So, so like I say, today's going to be doing that. Um, I haven't put up a video in a while because it's been totally nuts up here. Um, we had. Um, Oh, a hurricane or a tropical storm blow through um, last Sunday. And then it went into this really cool, like, um, heat wave where we had like four days of nothing but over 90 degree heat. And it was just brutal. Like, and the humidity was like 74% or something like that. It was just like total tropical. And I, I love the heat and I love the tropics, but... It was taking this old dude down fast, you know. But, uh, so, as parts come, I'll get more um, content out there for you. That's a good stuff. Like I say, I'd like to get this thing running. I'll probably put it back in the Jeep. I was going to give, you know, give it a test run and just kind of beat the snot out of it. and and Because it's all tuned and ready to go. All I got to do is take the head back off install the crank pistons and then you know i'm glad they said you multiple head gaskets with it because i stick i think i still have one spare head gasket left from the other kits that i bought and uh we'll go from there yeah and i'm probably going to eliminate the fan on the thing and just use an electric fan i do have um i bought i guess a, a buddy of mine at work there every time he breaks down a headlight or something or he's into the computer scene he brings me like electric fans, you know, so you can run them off like 12 volts or whatever, or up to 12 volts, 6 to 12. So I'll probably give myself some room with electric fan. And uh, we'll get this thing in, and we'll give it a test, and we'll see if the grub screw trick works. Um, you know, like you say, I don't, I, I don't have a lot of faith in it, but, you know, if they... If they're buying time, that's one thing. But if they, if it's a correct fix for the thing, that's why I would like to put it in the Jeep. Because I was just going to put a cover on here, like a, you know, a Lexan cover, and watch it go. But I don't have a high-speed camera to slow it down to watch the crank flex or anything like that. Um, my YouTube channel don't produce enough revenue to even buy these crankshafts lately. So, um, it's basically... We're on a budget here. We're bucks down. But, uh, and the reason I was not going to do that was, one, you're not going to see anything anyway because there's going to be a bunch of spray in there. And two, the case here, it with running it without the pan on the bottom, it could flex and it could cause another problem. So I'm just going to put it together as they say to put it together. I'll put it back in my Jeep and we'll just give it a good hammering and we'll see how long it lasts you know um this engine it should it should just you should be able to beat the snot out of this thing without any problems you know um and like you say most of these crank failures are starting when they start right after they start or when they're running you know like idling mine mine broke this one broke at idle i got it running it was sitting there idling and it just I heard a snap and it popped and it shut off and uh, but and I wanted to put a harmonic balancer or something on these things but the front the crankshaft is so thin if it was wider here I could make a little uh, harmonic balancer which is just a piece of steel with a like I'd put a rubber o-ring and then you know would I would groove it and then put the o-ring over it and then put another um, thick piece of steel over it with a groove inside it so the o-ring would press it together so it wouldn't come off but uh right now there's no room for that so i'm just going to go uh without redesigning their design i'm just going to go with this and put it back together so 
So stay tuned for the next video. Um, I hope you guys are having a good time. Uh, for real, in lockdown. I guess uh, Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks, he's in lockdown again down there in Sydney. Um, it's funny because that's where this, oh, this engine is made is in Sydney, Australia. That's where it comes from. So you know, I, I don't expect the mail to be coming too fast. That supercharger came within, you know, within a week. I was really surprised with the pandemic going on down there. So you guys stay safe. And I'll catch you later, man. Any questions, comments, hit me up. And like, share, subscribe if you want. So adios. Catch you later.